I'm Ian McLean, and in this second part of the ISM code, I want to look at continuous improvement. All quality management systems have the feature of continuous improvement. This is where the system is organic, and it grows, and it learns, either from things that have gone wrong, or through reporting of near misses, or through audits where non-conformities are discovered. The objective is to continually improve the system. Now, to look at continuous improvement and how it works and how it's evolved, probably the easiest thing to do is to think about a director of a shipping company who's decided he wants to employ a new chief engineer. So an advert goes in the paper and we send out a set of application forms. The application forms start to come in. And we have no screening, so all the forms go to the director and he looks at them and a lot of them aren't filled in properly. So he throws the ones away. However, he realises this is a waste of his time, so he moves to the next stage, which is inspecting quality in. There, he will ask a secretary to look at each form as it comes in, and if it hasn't been properly filled in, the form gets thrown away. However, this is very wasteful because there may be a small error in the form as to why uh, it hasn't been filled in properly. So the secretary then sends those forms back to the applicants and ask them to correct what they've done wrong, corrective action. This is quality control. However, if the secretary is keeping a close eye on what's happening, it will probably be noticed that actually 80% of the errors are happening in only a small part of the form. And in that case, it may be worth redesigning the form. And this is preventive action. So where we take corrective action and we take preventive action to stop the same error from happening again, we've reached the stage of continuous improvement. And the same happens under the ISM code, especially following an accident. Under the ISM code, section 9, we are mandated, following an incident, to perform an investigation in order to try and learn from it. Now, why is that important in the context of litigation? Well, the answer to that is quite simple. These forms will go right down to the root cause of what went wrong. The report will help people understand how to improve the system by identifying the cause of the incident. The problem is that that report will also have to be handed over to an opponent in due course if the matter litigates in England. And that may give an opponent a rich source of material in order to either defend a claim or advance a claim. Under those circumstances, we need to be careful. We need to recognise there is a tension between the production of this ISM Code Section 9 report and litigation. Now, Clearly, we can't say we stop following the ISM code. That's important. We need to learn. But equally, we have to keep one eye on the litigation risk that that report presents. Consequently, it's imperative that those involved in preparing these reports liaise closely with their insurance and claims function and talk to the P&I Club about the content and timing of those reports so we do as little damage as possible to our prospects of succeeding litigation.